What's up, everybody? Let's talk about Prism and the new Illusionist class. I am so floored that they added a class. I guess technically they've added four classes in this set, but that they added a, like a new class. Like um, we had Brute, so Shadow Brute's like the next logical step. We had Warrior, so Light Warrior makes sense. We had Rune Blade, so Rune Blade as a Shadow Rune Blade is like, duh, yeah, sure. But the fact that they said, nah, let's go ahead and just create something brand new and put it in this set along with it absolutely floored me. I was not expecting that at all. And the fact that it's Illusionist, Oh, it's so cool because I wanted to know what you would actually do with Illusionist. Now we get to talk about that. So let's look at literally every card that's been spoiled for Illusionist just up until this point. I waited a little bit because I really wanted to like see what was going to come of this class and how LSS kind of took Illusionist and what direction they kind of went. And now that we have some ideas about how Prism works, I am so floored. This is so exciting. First of all, I should say this as I reposition myself. First of all, if you have not watched the Alpha Investments reveal of, <laughs> of Prism, that video is hilarious. It is absolutely fantastic. You need to go watch it. I guess I'll put like a, I'll put a link in the description or something like that. I'll make a pop-up happen above my head somewhere. You should watch it. It's fantastic. Um, watching it along with like a thousand other people was also really cool. Hanging out in chat. And the, the absolute super extreme close-up of the nose, that was the best shot in the entire thing. That was so good. So go watch the video and then come back and let's talk about Prism. So here's Prism. And we're just going to literally just go through all the cards. We're going to do this transition. Look at us. Whoosh. Look at that. Prism, Sculptor of Arclight, is an illusionist, a light illusionist hero. She has 40 health and 4 intellect. Um, she has a once per turn instant effect, meaning you can play this on your turn or on your opponent's turn. And as such, you can do this effect like right at the end of your opponent's turn after they've expended all of their resources. You can pay two resources and you can banish a card from Prism's soul and create a spectral shield token, which is very interesting. You're like, oh, I wonder what a spectral shield token is does that's a great question it's really good that you asked that because we can actually take a look at that so let's go ahead and, and mouse on over by the way here's the young version i think both versions look absolutely phenomenal um, i saw a comment from somebody that said oh so we're just going with like force of will art uh, and I thought, you know, that's actually pretty accurate. This is sort of like a mixture between like what we already have established as flesh and blood sort of art style and force of will. And you know what? I'm 100% here for it because it's actually my favorite art style, period, end of story. Um, like if I watch anime or something like that, this is the art style that I prefer to see. And so I absolutely love that we have this like almost full art version of her because you can kind of see through the text box with the fantastic like gold uh, Dorinthia, um, what is it, Solana bordering. Oh, it's just so good. The art is so, and the composition is so well laid out. I don't know why she's doing this, but she's like, come on, let's go. It's pretty sweet. And then this one, her being a bookworm and then reading actual books, like that's the image that we get. It's pretty sweet because if you read her lore, she's like totally living in the library of Solana, which is cool. So a spectral shield token is an illusionist token aura that uh, stays out in the field on your turn, on your opponent's turn. And it says, if your hero would be dealt damage, Instead, destroy this Spectral Shield token and prevent one damage that source would deal. So, uh, let's say you have three Spectral Shield tokens um, up on the on the field and your opponent's attacking you uh, for two, okay? Uh, the, the damage would go through if you didn't block it, and one Spectral Shield token would soak up one damage of the two. Uh, another Spectral Shield token would soak up another one, and the third one would stick around because uh, the damage has already been prevented. That's essentially how these are going to work. Uh, think of it like reverse rune chance. They're going to soak up uh, a point of damage uh, until they're not needed anymore, essentially. I don't know if that's a good reverse rune chance. I'm not sure if that's a good kind of like connection, if that's a good thing. I don't know. I'm just going to go with it. It's kind of like reverse rune chance. Um, her weapon, if you can call it that, is an orb. And it literally just says, during your action phase... Um, Iris of Reality, uh, by the way, is what it's called. During your action phase, illusionist cards you control, sorry, illusionists 
auras you control, even more important that it's, we talk about the fact that this is uh, applying to all illusionist auras. Illusionist auras you control are weapons with four attack and they have this effect. Once per turn action, pay three resources, attack, go again. That's the biggest thing, go again. So those, um, let me go back to them. The spectral shield tokens here that you create by using her effect, pitching two resources and banishing a card from your soul, those things on your turn, thanks to Iris of Reality, will become weapons with four attack that have a pitch for three attack, go again effect. So essentially, your defensive like tools, these auras, these one block auras, uh, all of a sudden become four attack weapons that all have go again, that if you can pay for each of them, can attack individually, which is amazing. That's really, really cool. That's a really cool way of taking the idea of an illusionist, someone who is trying to trick you uh, into thinking about how you're going to like, or what you're seeing, really. They're trying to trick you into what you're seeing. It's like, is this real? Is this not real? Well, it was defensive. Now it's going to hit you in the face. That's very, very cool. Also, this card is beautiful. This card's so beautiful. I am a sucker for galaxy things, like galaxy print anything. Uh, I just, for some reason, I just love it. It's the color usage. It's the bright, vibrant colors, and this has it. Speaking of bright, vibrant colors, Dreamweavers is fantastic. Exactly what you would want for Illusionist. It blocks nothing. That part's not good. But it says, action, destroy them. The next Illusionist attack action card you play this turn loses and can't gain Phantasm. Go again. Now, we haven't talked about what Phantasm is because we haven't looked at the cards that have Phantasm, so we should do that. By the way, this also has Spell Void. You can destroy this equipment and block some Arcane damage. Uh, Spell Void's not great compared to, like, Arcane Barrier. Uh, it's, it's not great at all. But in a pinch, if you're playing in Limited, then you just run Spell Void out there. You block a big attack or you block some of a big attack and uh, you stick around for another turn. Dreamweavers, however, taking away Phantasm is great because Phantasm is really, really bad. Like the effect. It's not, nah, I shouldn't say that, it's not really, really bad. It is the only downside to these amazingly disgusting attacks that Illusionist has. So let's talk about one of them. Phantasmoclasm is a hilarious title. It also costs three. It pitches red, it's a majestic, it's an Illusionist action attack, blocks three as well. Attacks for nine, just a casual nine for three, right? We all kind of know that's the baseline vanilla stat. Nine for three, you should expect to deal nine damage if you're paying three. Look at the defending hero's hand and choose a card. They put it on the bottom of their deck and then they draw a card. You take away something from your opponent's hand, you put it on the bottom of their deck, and they're left with something likely worse. That's really, really good, okay? The fact you're attacking for nine, and before your opponent even says, okay, I'll block with this card, this card, and this card, you get to remove one card from their hand and just put it on the bottom of their deck. Then they have to rethink how they block, how their next turn's gonna go. It's disgusting. Now, on to Phantasm. It is a keyword for the Illusionist, and it says, if Phantasmoclasm is defended by a non-Illusionist attack action card with six or more attack, that's the important part, with six or more attack, destroy Phantasmoclasm and close the combat chain. Close the combat chain is also important, okay? Um, so what this is essentially doing is forcing your opponent to run six attack action cards if they want to cleanly block a Phantasmoclasm or really anything with Phantasm on it because that's the key word. If your opponent blocks with a six attack action card or higher then Phantasm effect or Phantasm card, whatever card it is, will just disappear. Your opponent has discovered that it's all a clever ruse and you don't take they don't take any damage. And nothing else happens, in fact, as well, which is important to note. Uh, the fact that this ability, though, on Phantasmoclasm goes off before that even happens is gross, is disgusting. This card is every bit worthy of a Majestic and this class is gonna be cool. Oh my gosh, it's gonna be cool. Speaking of other cool cards, I skipped over this one for a second. Uh, Prismatic Shield costs three. It's an instant, so you can play it at the end of your opponent's turn or just at any point, I guess, in your opponent's turn. And it just creates three of these shield boys. Look at this, it creates three of these. By the way, if you didn't know what those are, they're four attack weapons. That's what they are, I mean, they're four attack weapons. Now, does this cost anything? Yes, you have to pitch a card from your hand, play Prismatic Shield, 
leaving you with either two or three cards left. But on your turn, if those two or three cards are blue, then you can attack with the Spectral Shield tokens for essentially free. And in fact, this is even better than free. Uh, well, it's not better than free, I shouldn't say that. It's it's better than attacking with normal four attack weapons, which is already really good, because you're pitching to the bottom of your deck to make these attacks. Your opponent is blocking with cards from hand, thus lowering the count of their deck, plus also they're playing cards out, doing that sort of thing. So you can easily play the long game by just pitching blues all over the place and attacking with your weapons and then just defending, which is very scary if you think about, like, fatigue decks or that sort of thing but they exist in the game and they're fun to play in my opinion so i'm okay with it that's what i that's that's my opinion i'm okay with it so you should be too uh, <laughs> enigma chimera is a two cost illusionist attack action uh it attacks for eight you know eight sure phantasm is the only thing on it phantasm again will make it to where if your opponent has a six attack action card and they choose to block with that then Enigma Chimera explodes and you know like into like a pretty cloud of dust or you know sparklies, whatever illusionists use to cast their spells. I don't know fog. Spears of Surreality is a, a one attack. It's kind of blurry. I apologize. A one attack. Sorry, a one cost five attack action card. That also has Phantasm. So if your opponent blocks it in the six attack or more way, then it explodes, goes away. But it has Go Again. And this is another interesting interaction. Let's just say that uh, you play this card down. You're like, sweet, I've got, I'm going to have go again at the end of this turn when this resolves. But then your opponent blocks with a six attack action card. All of a sudden, Phantasm triggers, and this card does not resolve, therefore not giving you the go again refresh action point. Are we all clear on that? That's how that works. That's, that's how it's going to work. So if you pick this card up in pre-release, good for you. It's a really good card. If your opponent blocks with six, just know you're not going to get the go again from it because this card will not resolve. It just dissipates. Also, the art is fantastic. Look at her throwing those blue spears. That's pretty cool, man. Also, I want to know who this person is. She looks neat. She looks really neat. Phantasmify this, this card. Really, this class. But this card is disturbing. It is a one-cost action. It says the next attack action card you play this turn is Illusionist in addition to the other class types. Okay, first of all, in addition to the other class types means like what? If it's Illusionist in addition to generic? In addition to light? I wonder if... I feel like this is one of those cards they front-loaded for being really good later. It's already really good. But I wonder if they're front-loading this card to be even better, because in addition to its other class types, I wonder if they're hinting that they're going to allow you somehow to play cards of other class types in Illusionist. That makes a ton of sense, because Illusionist, being what it is, can like trick you into thinking something else exists. Nevertheless, the most important part is this. You give it plus five and Phantasm. Okay, the Phantasm part sucks, right? Because Phantasm makes whatever attack you're going to play easily blockable easily blockable by a six attack right so that's so easy people put six attacks in their deck all the time no they don't that's sarcasm okay sometimes they do if they if you're playing against a brute then like six attack sure they have a bunch of those uh if you're playing against a uh, warrior i mean mm, not really like command and conquer okay sure um light warrior might play some light attacks that have that right we, uh, there's there's a couple there's a couple out there that do that um your big guardian attacks guardians like sweet i'm a fine with this i just block phantasm's gonna be no problem ninja absolutely gonna get chewed up wizard gonna get chewed up by this class um what else is gonna get chewed up by this class oh i don't know let's think uh mechanologist eh sort of they kind of have that break point of like five attack I'm on a tangent. I'm sorry. I apologize. This is so cool. This card is Slogism. It's Slogism for one on a class that already has ridiculously statted attacks. Okay. And if you play Slogism for one and then Dreamweavers and then play, oh, I don't know, any of these attacks, who cares? Enigma Chimera, sure. A total of three that we've paid. One for the uh, Slogism for one, uh, zero to do dream, re dream Weavers, and two to play, go over here, Enigma Chimera. So all of a sudden you're attacking for what, 13? And you've removed Phantasm through the gloves, through the uh, Dream Weavers. 
is disgusting. This card's so good. This card, pick this up and draft. It's a rare. It's in a cycle, so it's going to go 5 4 3. Pick up the blue, pick up the red. You're going to want blues in this uh, class because it's just, you're just going to want that. Okay, parables. Parable of, these are auras. And by the way, just a reminder auras will be four attack weapons on your turn. So if parable of humility is on your turn, just like still up, and your opponent doesn't remove it, it is a weapon. I don't think I've seen enough people say this. I am fairly certain that this is correct because if we go back to the weapon, it's taking forever, I'm sorry. During your action phase, illusionist auras you control are weapons with four attack. This is an illusionist aura, is it not? Is it? Is it? Is it? It is. It's a light illusionist instant aura. Look, it's an aura. It said aura in there. Attack action cards controlled by an opponent have minus one while attacking and defending. Okay, that's that's pretty cool. So if you're playing against ninja, attack action cards controlled by them have a minus one. Um, that makes things a lot easier to block if they're playing like four attack things. But they're probably going to try to kadachi this down, which I assume will go through because take a look at what Spectra does. Spectra says this, Parable of Humility can be attacked. So it's like a target. It's kind of like what we see the allies as for the shadow side of things. You can target those with attacks. When Parable of Humility becomes the target of an attack, excuse me, destroy it and then close the combat chain. The attack does not resolve, which is also very big. So if your opponent goes like, okay, Parable of Humility is up, so I'm gonna Kadachi it down. That first Kadachi, you've not committed anything to blocking it, and yet it does not hit. So if they have Mask of Momentum, they're like, ah, sweet, I get a hit. No, you don't, because this stops the, the combat chain, and it uh, does not resolve the hit. So that's an important thing to note. It's also important to know that you're paying four for this effect, which is kind of a steep price. Uh, but in paying four, you could combine that with her own uh, prism effect and create a spectral token. So you pitch two blues, uh, you play parable, and you create a spectral token, or probably in the other, in the reverse, because it's an instant, and then you do this one. Nevertheless, this going out in the field immediately makes your opponent go, I need to range that down, because everything I do after that, particularly if I'm go wide, is going to be nerfed by it. So I have to waste an attack by dropping this. Or if you're playing like a mid range, I attack twice on a turn, like a warrior, then your warrior player goes, Ugh. Okay, so this is all of a sudden going to make uh, all of my weapon attacks a little less potent. Do I need to spend one entire attack just removing this? Uh, if you're playing like, oh, Guardian, um, I have one big attack, you know, or something like that. Some some effect, some class that has that effect. I have one big attack. Uh, all of these are going to get nerfed by one. So that's very interesting. Very, very interesting. Ode to Wrath is also interesting. Also costs four uh, it's also a light illusionist aura. It says whenever a source you control deals damage to an opponent opposing hero, they lose one life. So if you have like, oh, I don't know, if you have any way of dealing arcane damage, then this can start pinging them out for uh, just chunks of life if they let the arcane damage go through. One arcane damage causes them to uh, lose a life or take damage. Uh, then you also force them to lose a life with Ode to Wrath as well. Illusionist attack action cards you control have go again as well. All of them just have go again. That's disgusting. That's just disgusting. Now, some of them that we've seen so far already have go again. So it's like, eh, at that point, it doesn't matter. But if you have like Phantasmoclasm, you pitch blue, play Phantasmoclasm. Uh, they don't have a six to block it. It uh, also, in addition to dealing them massive amounts of damage, has go again. You can play, pitch another blue, play another thing, that sort of thing. This card's really good. Spectra, again, is therefore preventing you from blocking for this and, and allowing your opponent to destroy it. So keep that in mind while you're playing this set, is that uh, any card with Spectra on it is going to be ranged down by your opponent, most likely, pretty quickly, if they have the, the means to do that easily. Merciful Retribution is probably the best one of the of the bunch. These were all spoiled by uh, Fabled Hunters, and they did a great job on their video. It was fun to watch. You should watch that too. Pay four, and whenever an aura or attack action card you control is destroyed, deal one arcane damage to target hero. If it's a non-token light card, put it into your hero's soul. So in other words, if you have Ode to Wrath and Merciful Ret Retribution excuse me, out there on the field, 
um, and they try to range down Ode to Wrath, like they, they attack it, they target it, it explodes, then this is gonna deal them one point of Arcane. If they decide, unfortunately, to like, let's say you had this and that and some other aura, uh, Ode to Wrath would ping them after Merciful Retribution pinged them for targeting this in the wrong way and killing some other um, some other aura first. So it's really interesting. If you could somehow stack up all these auras, then you can get like a train going between those two cards. It'd be really expensive and probably unwieldy because your opponent can just target them down. But if you're if they're playing a class that that's not very easy for them to do, then maybe you can set it up. I don't know. It's pretty cool. Also, you get the benefit of if they are non-tokens, uh, they're just going to go into your soul and allow you to power her hero effect. Also, this has spectra, so it's going to explode when your opponent sees it. Blinding Beam cost one. It's an instant. It costs one less to play if it targets a shadow card. So it's free. And it says target attacking or defending attack action card gets minus three. Now we have to talk about something. They're going to change the rule book. And they're going to change it in this way. Up till now, if your opponent blocks with a card from hand, there is no reaction point where you can play an instant on that in that moment. You'd have to wait for them to declare blocks and then move to the attack and defense reaction portion. With that setup, Phantasm would destroy the attack you're making, the illusionist attack you're making, if they block with a six in that moment. It would just poof, it would go away. So you wouldn't have the ability to play this card as an instant when they block with that six attack card from hand. It would just it would go away. Your your time to play it would be in the attack and defense reaction uh, window essentially. They're changing the rules. That's not the case anymore. When they block with a card from hand like a six, you can play blinding beam for one or zero immediately after that, and all of a sudden their six, uh, maybe seven, maybe eight attack action card drops to a three, four, or five, thus not meeting the requirements for killing a phantasm card and allowing you to push that massive damage. And then they have to consider, oh, I should maybe block a, with a second six attack, or maybe I'm just gonna throw in the towel and let you hit me for a big amount. Either way, that change is huge for this class. It is huge for this class. And this card should m just very much be played in Illusionist. Very, very much be played. It is insane for this class. Genesis has beautiful art, and if this is not a playmat, I'm rebelling. Like, I want this playmat because it looks really pretty. It costs four. Uh, it's got Spectra. It's an aura. It says, at the start of your turn, you may put a card from your hand into your hero's soul for free. Just That's all you do. You just put one there. If it's Illusionist card, create a Spectral Shield. So it's like doing the effect on Prism, except she's paying you. You don't have to pay into her by banishing a card from your soul and paying two resources. You're literally playing this card up front, and then you're playing into your... Uh, soul and not having to pay the resources as well. That's really sick. It gets better. If it's a light card that you put into your soul, you draw a card to replace it. This is disgusting. If you let this stick, then you are making a wrong decision. If you let this stick at all in your opponent's setup, like that's just no, just don't do that. If you see this card, destroy it. I'm just saying. You're welcome for that that really smart tidbit of, uh, of strategy information. That's why you're here. Arc Light Sentinel is one of the prism specializations. Uh, it costs six, so it's incredibly expensive. Uh, it's a light illusionist instant aura. Uh, if Arc Light Sentinel is in the arena with an opposed, what does that say? It's so tiny. With an opposed, when an opposed, oh my God. I'm going to try this again. <laughs> if Arc Light Sentinel is in the arena when an opponent announces an attack, they have to pick Arc, Arc Light Sentinel as the target of that attack. So they basically, they can't attack you. It has to be Arc Light Sentinel. And of course, um, Spectra is just going to make it go poof, right? Why is this good? Well, I, it, it might not be. And I just, just want to go get this out there. It might not be good. But I will say in certain classes, against certain classes, it probably is good. Like, again, if you're playing Guardian, where they're like, or like Runeblade, where they're just trying to go like big attack, and you play Arclight Sentinel, they have to find a way to get rid of it first before they can do their big attack. Because otherwise, their big attack that they've set up for turns or whatever targets Arclight Sentinel and then doesn't have an on hit effect allowed. Does that make sense? So in those matchups, this card's really good. If you're playing against Ninja, 
this card's really bad, right? Because if they make an attack and you've already played Arclight Sentinel, well, then the Kadachi just kills this. So it's, it's a really feast or famine kind of a card. And I don't know if that's correct in saying that. Tell me if I'm wrong below. I'd love to know what your opinion is, but that's how it feels to me. The most recently spoiled card is Herald of Ravages. So that kind of gives you an idea of what where we're at currently. Look at the bordering. Oh my god, I hadn't stopped to look at the bordering because I just look at the angels so much whenever I see this card. These heralds, by the way, are kind of her thing. She, like, found how to bring heralds and, like, conjure heralds with her orb, like Prism did, in a book. She found, like, a book in the back of the in the back of the library. She's like, oh, what's this? Oh, what's heralds? Boom, heralds everywhere, which is interesting. Uh, this costs two, by the way, to play. It attacks for seven, uh, defends for three if you want to defend. If Herald of Ravages hits... Put it into your hero's soul and deal one arc, one arcane damage to target hero. So you get a free soul charge, and you get one free arcane damage they have to deal with. And that's if this hits. Now, it does have Phantasm, which is a problem, because Phantasm will allow this to just explode on impact if they block with six. So if you want to encourage this to hit, then you would have to um, you know play like the, the instant, the light instant that minus three is their thing. I just want to say... I think this loops back to the beginning. That's the last card. I just want to say this. There are people that are saying this class is going to auto-lose to Brute. I'm not sure. I don't think that's the case. I would I would venture to say that's not the case. Or really anything that likes to um, that likes to play six attack action cards. Because of this exact reason. If you play one big attack, pitching card to pay for it, and they can block with one card to destroy it, a six attack, you're still taking away, you're taking pressure off yourself. You're still taking that away. And because you're still taking that away, you are slowly but surely netting these positive gains. And you're, and you're at the very least, you're making it easier for yourself to block and harder, a little bit harder for them. It's like a very baseline idea. You're playing an attack, pitching a card to pay for it. That card that you pitch goes under. They're losing a card to block it. Now, if they don't have six attacks, you know, just if you're playing a class that normally does and just they don't have it that turn, then you're basically getting free damage. You're it's like you're playing Brute without having to play Brute, right? Is that does that make sense? Because you're playing these giant attacks without the drawback of like, oh, I'm going to lose a card from hand because I have to discard it. And so over the course of time, by playing Phantasm attacks, even if they can just advantageously block with a card for six, you know, and uh, pop the Phantasm, even with that, you're still getting like these tiny edge advantages as you play the game. And that is what's really interesting about this class to me. I feel like there's going to be a lot of different ways you could build a uh, prism deck and build a, an illusionist deck. I'm really, really fascinated to see what they're going to do with the rest of this set and with like what they're going to do down the line for this like class. Are they going to include a different illusionist are they going to include more illusionist cards? I think all options are completely, totally wide open because no one expected them to bring a brand new class to the game after the way that they released these three. No one except Red Zone Rogue. So go over to Red Zone Rogue's channel and tell him congratulations because he was like the only person I saw that was still on camp brand new class. And he needs the, uh, he needs the support and uh, he needs people to tell him he was right because he was, okay? He was correct and I totally didn't... I had no clue this was going to happen. I'm so excited, though. I'm so stoked that this is a thing. I hope you guys are as well. I hope you're excited, too. This is so cool. I hope you enjoy this video as well. Hey, check this out. You made the last number go to the last number. So now, can you make that number go to the other number? If so, you're my favorite person. As always, everybody, thanks for watching.